Joining me now is Charlotte Laverne, Research Engineer in Biosystems and Agricultural Engineering. Well, Sharla, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Recently, we've been talking about um, water runoff from our landscapes and soil erosion and some of the issues that that has on our natural waterways. And I know you're the perfect person to tell us about how that impacts our streams and rivers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, when we get a lot of runoff off the watersheds, mm -hmm. the, um, and especially a, a watershed like we have here, it's fairly uh, narrow mm -hmm. and the slopes are steep. All that water coming off the watershed concentrates with a lot of energy in that stream bank zone and it can actually erode the soils and, and take all the vegetation away that's protecting the soil. Mm -hmm. And we, we can get a lot of so sediment in the stream that harms the aquatic ecology. Now obviously streams naturally erode and they move over geological time, yeah. but we're looking at some changes based on the human impact in the landscape that's changing this system. Right, mm -hmm. right. When we have a lot of impervious surface in the watershed, a lot of surfaces like asphalt and mm -hmm. concrete and even compacted soil from where we park or where we have our farm equipment, that can cause the, the rainfall that's coming down out of the sky to not go into the soil like it, like mm -hmm. it should, to replenish the ground and replenish the groundwater and actually slowly move to the stream. Instead, what it will do is it'll run off, just as you can observe in your parking lot or in your, mm -hmm. your driveway, you can see how fast it will run off of those yeah. surfaces. And when you get a lot of that from all over the watershed, mm -hmm. running off at the same time, it, it really does concentrate the power of that water and the quantity of that power. Mm -hmm. I mean, the quantity of the, the water as well as the power so that it'll just strip that sediment out of the either the stream bed or off the stream banks, depending on uh, where the harder surfaces are in the stream itself. And I like that you use the word power. When we think of, oh, some big storm effects like a hurricane or something, we can see the force of water. But yeah. even just water from a regular rain moving through here, it carries a tremendous force with it. Yes, and especially here in Oklahoma where we have the really high, intense, uh, highly intense storm events, mm -hmm. we'll get all that power of the raindrop itself impacting the soil, but also all the raindrops coming together, and they can dig furrows in the soil mm -hmm. and really carry a lot of the sediment to the stream off the fields, but also then you know dump that in various places in the stream and pick up more soil and move that downstream and put it in a place where it shouldn't be and where it's covering over the habitat. So in the streams itself, we see habitat loss to mm -hmm. fish, insects, other aquatic dwellers. And then we're seeing these changes in the structure of the stream bank. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and uh, right now we're in a section of Cow Creek where we didn't do any work. Mm -hmm. So we, this is what the stream banks look like all the way through the creek from mm -hmm. here to Highway 51 and as it curved through the Botanic Garden property and alongside some of your new trails. But um, this is what it, what it used to look like, the really steep slopes, mm -hmm. kind of narrow channel, mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of water flowing through. This is actually from the water treatment plant effluent, but uh, water treatment plant put some water base flow into the stream, otherwise it would be dry. This is actually supposed to be an intermittent or ephemeral stream and mm -hmm. only flow during the storm events. Okay. Well, you mentioned that you've done some work on the downstream part. Let's go take a look at that and how you've reshaped the stream bed. All right. Well, Charlotte, the problems that we saw upstream were really affecting all parts of Cow Creek and threatening some of the infrastructure in the Botanic Garden and even the gardens themselves. The, the creek yeah. was mi migrating that way. And your team has put into place several different strategies to um, protect that creek, protect the slopes, and, and stabilize it. Tell us about some of those. Yes, well, as you might remember from just upstream, we had a situation where we had steep stream banks mm -hmm. with not much vegetation on them anymore. We had some trees with tree roots, and those were good, but really there, there was not this understory mm -hmm. to the trees. So what we are trying to produce in this situation is, uh, is uh, sloped banks. We took made much shallow, shallower slopes mm -hmm. so that we can open it up and have all this herbaceous, you know, annual perennial vegetation, shrubs, mm -hmm. as well as the trees that will then uh, be able to grow up on these slopes and keep the shade, the canopy over the stream, 
but still have vegetation on these slopes. Yeah. So the steeper slopes, there were just too much energy was focused right in there, right. peeling okay. off that vegetation and not, and there wasn't enough sunlight really to let that understory grow. But in this situation, we're, we will open it up. Uh, the, some of the sunlight will be able to filter through, support the understory. Mm -hmm. And um, just the fact that we have these shallower slopes, the water, will, as it rises, will have more and more area to dissipate the energy. So mm -hmm. as that water flows onto these slopes, it'll interact with the vegetation, with the tree trunks, or, the, or lay over the grasses onto the soil. And we'll have protection of the soil just from that physical, mechanical laying down of the plants, but also the roots of right. those plants. There, there'll Help be different, the you know, we'll have a, we're trying to achieve a native uh, o Oklahoma, Payne County situation mm -hmm. here. So we'll have roots of various lengths that'll hold the soil together in real big chunks instead of just little individual soil particles that can easily be swiped down. So, And as we look around, we're still trying to establish vegetation. There's a little bit of weeds that we've been battling, yep. um, but you're working with plants that are native to this area. And a lot of them you started as seed, and I see you have different structures in to try to stabilize that soil during the seeding process. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. we have some erosion control matting here, mm -hmm. some geotextile of sorts, and we have different levels for different er areas and how much force the water might have on that slope. So mm -hmm. down at the base of the slope where there's a lot of energy, we have this uh, coir matting and it has big holes. It allows that um, it's strong enough to resist the, the force of the water, but it, it also lays back against the soil. There'll be th it protects the seeds underneath and it allows then the vegetation to come up through the holes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have uh, temporary cover with the geotextile matting, but you want your permanent cover to be the vegetation to protect mm -hmm. that soil. And I'm excited to see some of the natives coming in already, the sunflowers and the azure sage. And down here you have a lot of the rushes that can handle being having their roots wet, having their feet wet like we like yeah, to say. Yeah, we actually mm -hmm. did a constructed wetland up here mm -hmm. and we realized that we didn't have as many of the emergent or the, the plants that are obligates to water along the, the sh the uh, stream side to protect the real edges. And we had a seep right up here, so we had a lot of water coming in, and we had a situation where we could use wetland plants, and mm -hmm. so, and that are also found along our streams. Yeah. Um, so we have, we have planted these, and they've really taken off and established. So another thing, um, so homeowners can certainly do some grading to try to j make those slopes gentle yeah. and focus on planting bare slopes. And they can also do a little bit of this. You call it riffling. Yep, yeah, right. yep. Tell this us is about it. Like mm -hmm. trying to simulate a riffle in mm -hmm. a, a kind of a environment of a stream where you would have a really shallow spot that you'd be able to walk across and where you find your insects, your bugs. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So they live in this type of environment. The, the fish usually kind of hide in the pools, mm -hmm. but they need their food. And so we have, we've created an uh, ecosystem like component here. Mm -hmm. And it also, the, these logs and these, these rocks, as long as they're sized large enough so that they won't be washed downstream and they're, they're stuck into the banks and, and they're stuck way underneath the soil, some of these, so they won't move. But um, as long as they won't wash downstream, they'll actually dissipate the energy and that water mm -hmm. will tumble over them. And even in a very high profile of water, it'll slow the water down a little bit. And then with these banks, we've created a, a situation where we have the soil for that water, that increased water levels to actually dissipate into the soil. So we're not increasing the flooding downstream and we're, um, but we're also, you know, reducing the energy so it isn't as hungry and it doesn't take so much soil and so much of the vegetation off the banks, mm -hmm. either here in our project area or downstream. And we're also creating some great habitat as well. It's a real nice situation yeah. you have. Well, your team's worked with some funding to establish this site, and it's really meant to be for teaching and ed uh, research and education. Tell us. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the money came from EPA, mm -hmm. and it was part of the American Resource and Recovery Act. It was a green project for Oklahoma, and we were really proud to be able to get some of that money. And we've created a, a, dem uh, yeah, a pilot site, or I mean, I guess a, a demonstration site, mm -hmm. education site, uh, research site, just as you said. Uh, where we can bring tours of people out here and we've had a lot of tours of people yes. come out and mm -hmm. we've been able to educate them about these principles and about native plants and um, but also researchers from all across campus and other government entities that um, are able to come here and, and do research on either the native plants or the soils or the water 
So we're, we're trying to encourage the, uh, everyone working together and, and learning and passing on that knowledge to Oklahoma. Excellent. Well, it's been really exciting to watch the dynamic as this took shape, and I'm sure we'll see much more as that research comes in. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Thanks. Thanks.